perhaps the best loved gems of all time, pearls natural and cultured occur in a wide variety of colors. People have coveted natural pearls as symbols of wealth and status for thousands of years. A Chinese historian recorded the oldest written mention of natural pearls in 2206 BC. As the centuries progressed toward modern times, the desire for natural pearls remained strong. Members of royal families as well as wealthy citizens in Asia, Europe and elsewhere, treasured natural pearls, and passed them from generation to generation. From those ancient times until the discovery of the New World in 1492, some of the outstanding sources of natural pearls were the Persian Gulf, the waters of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, Chinese rivers and lakes, and the rivers of Europe. As we know about pearl is a cold gem because it represents the moon. Most of the girls love to wear pearl jewelry, because pearl is a jewelry that you can wear with any dresses, whether it is traditional or modern dresses. It will increase your style and glamour. Most of the people only know about pearl stone, but people will never have ever heard of the pearl types. There are several types of pearls that you can choose from to add stunning pieces to your jewelry collection. In this video, we are going to look at 10 types of pearls, and understand how they are produced, the journey they undergo, and the prices of each in the market. So, let's begin. With its showy, oversized shape and shimmering rainbow-like luster, a Mabi Pearl offers the look of a South Sea Pearl for a fraction of the price. The Mabi Pearl gets its name from the type of mollusk in which it is grown, the Pteria Penguin, which is called Mabi Gai in Japanese. A Mabi Pearl is actually a cultured blister pearl that is grown differently than other cultured pearls. Instead of being grown inside the body of a mollusk creature, a Mabi Pearl is grown against the inside of the shell. This allows the mabi pearl to develop a dome shape with a flat back, and is why made pearls are sometimes referred to as half pearls. To create a mabi pearl, a hemispherical nucleus is inserted into the shell beneath the mantle tissue. The mollusk is then returned to the water to allow layers of luster snasser to develop. After many, many months, the blister pearl is cut away from the inner shell, the nucleus is removed, and the hollow cavity is backed by a mother of pearl plate. Even with the help of man, creating a mabi pearl is a time-consuming process. Just the craft of seeding a mabi oyster takes years of training to master. However, the glistening, iridescent mabi pearls are well worth the wait. Ninth on our list is the rarest of rare among pearls, the quahog pearl. Quahog pearls are very rare, organic gems produced naturally by the Bibov clan, Venus mercenaria, or mercenaria mercenaria. Quahog pearls are found by fishermen off the eastern coast of the United States, typically in the New England region, where clams are harvested for their delicious meat for use in popular dishes such as clam chowder. It is estimated that only one out of every 100,000 quahog clams will produce a pearl of any kind, and the majority of them are not attractive enough to be used in jewelry. Purple and lavender are considered to be the most valuable shades of quahog pearls. In 2015, a 6 plus carat lavender quahog pearl was found by a policeman while eating a seafood soup. This pearl received national media attention and wound up selling at Kaminsky auctions for $16,500. Eighth on our list is the Keshi Pearl. Pearls are formed when a mollusk, like an oyster or a snail, produces layers of nacre around some type of irritant in its shell. Cultured pearls form around a nucleus placed in the oyster's soft mantle tissue. Natural pearls, however, form with no nucleus inside. Keshis are all natural because there is no nucleus inside, meaning the Keshi pearl is nothing but pure nacre. The Keshi pearl forms as a byproduct of cultivation. Because nacre is a precious material, Keshi pearls are highly prized, being made up of nothing but pure nacre. For this reason, they are sold by weight like gemstones. All natural Keshi pearls are unique treasures of rare and precious material. Since keshis are made up of pure nacre, there is nothing to stop the reflection of light making them extraordinarily lustrous. Keshi pearls shimmer and shine with amazing luster. Similar to precious gemstones, the color and luster of keshi pearls remain unchanged throughout time. This well-known sheen has been admired for many generations and cultures. Known as the gifts of the mermaids, keshi pearls were worn with pride for centuries by the princesses of the Arabian Kingdom. Their special luster creates a remarkable radiance when worn on the skin pile them high near the face in a fun, chic styles, and or layers. They stand out and catch the eye with their natural shapes, and are featured in all different types of jewelry design. Seventh on our list is the Abalone Pearl, a rare iridescent treasures of the sea. The most colorful of all pearl-producing mollusks, Abalone, are found in rocky coastal waters around the world. Though fairly plentiful, these rock-hugging snails rarely produce pearls. When they do, the cause is usually an inner shell or intestinal disturbance. 
Most commonly, the pearl is started when a small bit of shell or a parasite is perceived as a threat by the abalone. The foreign matter becomes encased in a nacre and thus creates a natural pearl. Due to the anatomy of the mollusk, abalone pearls can take on many unusual shapes. Though occasionally near round or symmetrical, most abalone pearls are baroque. The most common shape is one resembling a horn or shark tooth. Pearls of this nature have been known to reach a great size, sometimes measuring over five in length. Because abalone is hemophiliac, it is impossible to culture an abalone pearl. Many farmers have developed laborious techniques of culturing abalone-made pearls, however, these should not be confused with truly natural and wild-found pearls. Culturing abalone pearls is difficult because abalones are very sensitive creatures. They do not respond well to being handled, are sensitive to temperature, and bleed to death if their flesh is pierced. Greater success has been realized with the culturing of blister pearls, rather than whole spherical pearls. Abalone pearls are not to be confused with abalone shell, the pearls are wild found in the body of the animal. Abalone shell is frequently used in jewelry, and although the colors are just as vibrant it is nowhere near as valuable. Milo Milo Pearls, aka Milo Pearls, are gorgeous creations of nature that come from the Milo snail. These beautiful pearls show up on runways, auction houses, and on celebrities, but rarely on the common market. They're known for their smooth porcelain luster, beautiful natural patterns, and stunning, stylish color. Their extreme rarity and value make them highly sought after, but finding a Milo Milo Pearl are easier said than done. Milo pearls come from the Milo snail, a marine gastropod from the Volutidae family, and is also known as the Indian volute or the Baler shell. This large creature populates the South China Sea, and can also be found around Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Milo pearls are formed in the same way that other pearls form in mollusks. When an irritant gets into the creature's mantle, it begins its secretions in an attempt to reduce its discomfort. Over several years, the layers form a Milo pearl. While oysters and mussels can be cultured and forced to create pearls, the Milo pearl has not yet been successfully cultured. This means that every Milo pearl found is natural, grown in the wild through the creature's own devices. No human interference was involved. This makes Milo pearls all the more desirable. Because of their rarity, there is no standard way to price Milo pearls. They're priced on an individual basis, based on their quality, appearance and carat weight. Some Milo pearls have raked in thousands of dollars in Asia, where they are more well known than in the West. When set in beautiful jewelry, Milo pearls command very high prices. Famous auction house Christie's has auctioned off Milo pearls in the past, with high-quality unmounted pearls typically going for over $75,000, while some mounted pearls have cost over $250,000. Milo pearls are typically bought by collectors, as they make a prize part of any gemstone collection. Because they're so rare and difficult to find, often only those in the know are able to get their hands on them in time. Diff on our list is well known as a classic pearl designed, the Akoya Pearl of Japan. Japanese pearls come from the Akoya Oyster, grows around the Sea of Japan and throughout the Pacific region. Akoya pearls are the ones that the world associates most closely with Japan. Japan has many jagged coastlines, the Akoya Oyster thrives in such rocky, plankton-rich areas. Also, there are great seasonal changes in the water temperature of the sea around Japan. These temperature differences give the Akoya pearls its strong, uniquely beautiful shine. A major attraction of Akoya pearls is their fine coloring. They came in several color variations, but pink and white Akoya pearls have been famous worldwide for centuries. Another attraction is the suppered quality of their luster. They have a glow that seems they shine from within, a unique and unrivaled feature. The Akoya Pearl has been called, Crystallization of Japan's Natural Beauty. When we talk about the Japanese Pearl, one cannot forget the father of cultured Pearl, his name is Kakichi Mikimoto, the Pearl King. Very few individuals have changed the jewelry landscape, but Kakichi Mikimoto did, with a moment that proved seismic 125 years ago. In 1893 he succeeded in culturing a semi-spherical Pearl. A decade on he would begin producing perfectly spherical pearls of quality and quantity that would expose their luster to a whole new global audience. The Mikamoto name is, in fact, synonymous with superior quality. Each beautiful pearl strand, necklace, pendant, pair of earrings, bracelet, or ring reflects unparalleled care, dedication, and passion. Mikamoto means timeless elegance and sophisticated modern design. Exotic black pearls from the pink Margarita Ferrer black lip pearl oyster are more commonly known as Tahitian pearls. 
These pearls are often referred to as black, but have a remarkable color range that covers the spectrum, from light, creamy white and gray, to regal greens, iridescent peacock, and deep black. Tahitian pearls are relative newcomers to the pearl world, popularized only as early as the mid-1900s by the efforts of Mr. Robert Wan of Tahiti and his New York-based colleagues. Unlike the more common pearl types, Tahitian pearls typically have a naturally dark body color. These pearls have become some of the most sought-after, expensive pearls in the world. Because of their vast color range, matching these pearls into a finished strand is an enormous task requiring thousands of loose pearls to create a single strand. Tahitian pearls are considered to be the second most valuable commercially farmed pearls in the world. Unlike black freshwater and black akoya pearls, which have been irradiated or dyed, Tahitians come by their dark color naturally. Beautiful Tahitian pearls are among the largest pearls in the world, ranging in size from approximately 8 mm to 18 mm. The only larger commercially harvested pearls today are the South Sea. The beauty of Tahitian pearls, however, is not limited to their size, but their incredible array of iridescent colors. Tahitian pearls are the only pearls that have a full color spectrum. Black lip pearl oysters have a rainbow-like mantle which exhibits all natural colors. These colors are expressed in Tahitian pearls in a magical way with colors shimmering over the surface of some of the best specimens. Because Tahitian pearls are bead nucleated many of them are round, or near round, with other shapes expressed in drops, baroques, button, and circled pearls. When all other factors are equal, round Tahitian pearls are the most valuable. Often called the Rolls Royce of pearls, South Sea pearls are the most prestigious of all the pearl varieties. These stunning pearls also happen to be the largest and the rarest, making them the most valuable. A strand of South Sea pearls, whether white or gold, is immediately eye-catching and makes for a statement look. Because of their high price point and scarcity, purchasing South Sea pearls can be a little bit daunting. South Sea pearls are produced by the largest pearl-producing oyster, the Pintada Maxima, which comes in two distinct color varieties, the white-lipped oyster and the gold-lipped oyster. As you might guess, the type of oyster influences the color of the pearl. Most South Sea pearls come from the northwestern coast of Australia, while most of the golden variety comes from the Philippines and Indonesia. Each South Sea pearl takes about three to four years to grow, which is the longest growth period for cultured pearls. The longer the pearl is allowed to grow, the larger it becomes. South Sea pearls are known for their stunning white and gold colors. The white variety comes in silver, ivory, bright white, and blue colors, and makes up about 90% of the total South Sea pearl productions. Blue South Sea pearls are very rare and can be intense in color. The golden pearls come in cream, champagne, and deep gold hues, and are much rarer. Unlike some other pearl varieties, the overtones in South Sea pearls are not generally very striking. Rather, it is the body color of the pearl that is the most apparent. As these pearls are stunning in their natural color, the color is rarely enhanced. Among the rarest and most expensive type of pearl in the world, conch pearls are in demand once again, thanks to the resurgence and popularity of natural pearls of all varieties, and a renewed appreciation of their uniqueness. Pretty and pastel-hued, a conch pearl is a calcareous concretion produced by the queen conch mollusk, which is a large edible sea snail. Most often pink in color and normally oval-shaped, the finest examples display a wave-like flame structure on their surface, and have a creamy, porcelain-like appearance and unique shimmer. Unlike oysters, which can be prized open to reveal the exact location of a pearl, no one knows precisely where conch pearls are formed because of the elaborate world structure of a conch shell. Grown inside a pearl sac in the orange mantle of the queen conch, they are normally found at the same time as the meat is cut out of the shell. Gem-quality conch pearls are often oval, which lends itself perfectly to jewelry, but they are found in all kinds of shapes, from baroque to rounded. Very rarely are they perfectly spherical. A perfectly symmetrical oval is the most desirable. It is unusual to find a conch pearl that exceeds 2 to 3 millimeters, and one that weighs more than 10 carats is considered exceptional. One of the biggest known conch pearls in history is a whopping 45 carats. Pear-shaped and reddish pink in color, it was set into a necklace by New York jeweler Harry Winston in the 1980s, which sold after Liz Taylor modeled it on the front cover of Good Housekeeping magazine around 1990. It changed hands at auction several times after that, but its whereabouts are unknown. And first on our list is the giant pearl. Giant pearl are among the rarest and non-nacre pearl, produced by the giant clamp, Tridacna gigas. These bottom-dwelling behemoths are the largest mollusks on earth, capable of reaching 4 feet in length and weighing more than 500 pounds, with a lifespan of over 100 years old or more. They live in the warm waters of the South Pacific and Indian Oceans. 
The adductor muscle of the giant clam is actually considered a delicacy, and over-harvesting of the species for food, shells, and the aquarium trade has landed it on at least one group's vulnerable list. The pearl that they produce is non like the other pearls, they don't shimmer, and they don't have the luster with an irregular shape, but their price on the market is in millions of dollars. And two of the largest pearls found was in Powell and Philippines. Pearls are a timeless jewel. The luster and beauty of them had been highly valued and continue to fascinate us. It may seem as everything had been achieved using pearls, from the natural and cultured, to stimulated pearls, but it remained to be seen what the future may bring. Today, the aesthetic of pearls is boundless, and the variety of pearls is remarkable.